Hi there. Today we're going to be having a look at the 2019 Free State September preliminary paper. This is heavily based on the 2018 Northwest preliminary paper, so if you have access to that paper there will be several similarities. Well, please have a look at the web page. You'll find the question paper in PDF format as well as the four questions. Download those and extract them in an appropriate folder as I have done here. We'll begin with question one. We'll begin by opening question 1b, the project file. And as you can see on the right hand side, we have one source unit, form question one, with several buttons that we are going to be programming. I'm going to hide the controls on the right hand side, just to give us a little bit more space to work with. I'm going to have the question paper open on the sidebar on the right hand side of the page just so you can follow along as we work. So let's begin with question one. When the user clicks on the button, do the following. Enter the name, surname and ID number of the client as well as the telephone number without spaces in four suitable variables. If we go to the button, this is where we're going to be. You can see in the code that we are already provided with these variables as part of the form class. So we're going to use the ones that are provided. Otherwise, I might also have created them as a global variable under the var section. They will have to be global variables, either fields in the class or in the var section, because we're going to refer to them in the later questions. So, simple enough, S name is we need to take this from the first edit box and this is edit name the second one is edit surname edit id and edit tell now so we're going to have to use those names edt name dot text is surname is id and is tell. Right. Spelling is always important. Don't worry about formatting in your exam. I just do that because it looks a little bit neater and easier to read for me. Okay, question two. When the user clicks on Button 2, convert the name of the client from back to front. There are several ways that we can do this. And there we go. And we're going to store the result in the label. The label is this one, label display name. The ways that we can do this will all involve some form of for loop because we're going to have to process each of the characters in the name. This is a simple test if you can use a for loop exercise. And to have somewhere to store this, I'm also going to create a temporary variable of type string, which is going to store the reversed string. Always start off by initializing your variables. Right, our string would look something like this. So what we're going to want to do is take, for example, the first character, then insert the second character before it, the third character, the fourth character, and the fifth character, and so on until we reach the end of the string. That's one way of doing it. The other one would be to start at the back and work your way to the front. You'd end up with the same result. So for my for loop, for i, I've already created that variable. Remember, Delphi strings start at 1. And we're going to go to the length of the string. There is a length function. Length of s name. And to follow that pattern that I had initially, 
I can use my stamp, stmp, colon equals, and remember we have to insert this in at the beginning of the string every time. So we're going to take from s name, and in this instance I'm treating s name as an array. You can do this. A string can also be looked at as an array of characters. So plus stmp. And last, we need to display this in that label, LBL, um, just check the name, LBL display name. Right, let's see if this works. Remember, we're going to have to type something here, A, B, C, D, E, and I'll have to prime it with button 1, otherwise there isn't anything yet to process. So, prime it with button 1 and button 2, and it's reversed. Just for thoroughness, another way of doing this would have been to use the copy command instead of referring to individual letters using an array format. So, copy, we're copying from S name, and my starting point is going to move the whole time. I'm always going to be copying one character, so we can put that in so long, but my starting point is the moving target, and I can use the index in the array i to refer to that starting point. This should give me exactly the same result. Save, run the program, and let's use that again, a, b, c, d, e, f, prime the variables, and there we go. So, on to question three. When the user clicks the button three button, calculate the age of the client using his ID number. The first two digits of the ID number represent the year in which he or she was born. Now, this question, you'll see there, says that if the number was less than 18, assume born after 2000, and if greater than 18, assume born after before 2000. The 18 is because this paper originates as a Northwest paper set in 2018. So I'm going to update this a little bit for the year 2020, which is the year in which I'm busy doing this exercise. I'll use 20 instead of 18, but it's the same logic that applies. What? Right. We're going to have to get today's date, because we have to use a system date. I'm also going to have to extract the year from the ID number. So, we'll need a string variable, which I'm going to use to extract those two digits. I'm going to want to convert this into a number, so I'm going to make an integer version of this as well. We may need some other parameters. We'll see as we go. So let's begin with this. Extract those two letters from SID. They are at the start of the string, so it's just the first two letters. I'm going to have to convert those into an integer. I could have done this all in one line, but I prefer to split it up into small little places. If you make a mistake, it's easier to see where you made the mistake this way, as well as being just much easier to read. And now we have to do that choice. If my IYY is less than equal to 20, then I know the person is a youngster born in the 2000s, so we're going to add 2000 to my year. Otherwise, we know this person's a little older, so we're going to say they were born in the last millennium. That gives me the year that this person was born. Now I need to work out the age by subtracting this from the year in the current date. All right. Remember, Delphi has a decode date function, which will split this into 
a year, month and day component. These values have to be words. Don't let the name confuse you. Word in this case is a type of integer. An integer using two bytes and no negative numbers. So we're going to call this y w year w month and w day and these are words. So decode date. We need to refer to the current date. That will be the date function. Date. And we use my parameters w year. I seem to be hitting the typos today. W month and W day. Having got the current year, I can perform a simple calculation. And even though there are three of them, that's just one word. Right. The calculation is going to be the age. I'm going to store this in I, y, y. There's no reason why I can't reuse this variable. And we need to subtract the smaller of the two numbers from the larger. Obviously, the current date is the larger of the two numbers. So I, y, y minus w, year. And because these are both technically integers of uh, one type or other, I don't have to do any explicit conversion between them. That will be taken care of implicitly. There we are. Now we must just display this in the label. The label in this case is this one, which is label display age. LBL display age dot caption. Now we have to convert this to a string so that we can put it into the caption int to str i y y and save. And we should be done there. Let's have a look at the next question. When the user clicks on button 4, remove all the vowels A, E, I, O and U from the client's surname. Okay, button 4. So, I'm going to create a temporary string again, just to hold my processing. We don't want to delete the values in the original variables because in any sort of real programming we may need to refer to those values at a later stage. As with reversing the letters in the person's name, there are a few ways that we can do this particular exercise. So one way is to process this using a loop. Now there is something we have to be careful of. If I say for i equals one to the length of s surname, I'm going to have a problem. Remember, I'm reducing the length of this name every time I delete a letter. And that length in this for loop is calculated when this loop is first run. That same value will then be used for every iteration of the loop. So I can't actually use a for loop for this exercise. I'm going to have to use a different looping structure. So I'm going to have to use a while or repeat loop instead. Now, there are two basic ways I can go about this. The first one is to process a string and then delete the individual characters. The second one is to use two strings and only copy the characters that are not vowels. So I'll try and demonstrate both of them, but I'm going to start with the delete version. I'll begin by initializing my variables. SGMP is going to get the value from S surname. And I is going to start off at 1. So while I is less than the length of SGMP, this is one reason why a while loop performs slightly slower than a for loop this length function will be evaluated with every iteration of the while loop. With a for loop, it is only evaluated on the first iteration. 
makes the for loop faster, but it's also why I can't use a for loop for this. And then again, I'll use um, stamp as an array of characters for this one. And this checks to see whether S temp is in the set of characters A, E, I, O, and U. If it is, then I must delete the character from S temp. And we're going to delete at the index I that I've identified, and I'm only going to delete one character. If I don't delete, then I must increase I. Like this. The problem if I have a string Joan which has two vowels, one next to each other, when I identify the first one, I is two, delete that, and my I is still two. If I incremented I, regardless of whether I did it or not, I'd be skipping a vowel, I'd be I referring to N. So you've got to be careful in this instance to only increment if you don't delete. And that's basically it. That will give me a name without vowels. In this instance, as long as the name doesn't start with a vowel, because it doesn't check for capital letters. So, let's have a look at another way. I've used in in this particular case. Um, this is set notation, which doesn't really fall part of your syllabus. So, if I was going to do this without using sets, I could use a case statement or a whole series of is, ifs. If I equals A or S temp I equals E and so on. Or I could say if case um, S GMP I of and then we say gives me the flexibility to do basically exactly the same thing I had a moment ago. And if I wanted to be thorough, I could even add a lowercase to make sure that I avoid the capital letter principle that I just mentioned. So delete again from stmp, comma, i, comma, 1. A case statement also has an else, so that would take care of that one. I mentioned you can do this without any delete at all. Let's have a look at that solution. For this solution, I'm not going to initialize s temp to s surname. I'm going to leave it blank. And we are going to go through the entire string s surname. Remember, I'm not deleting anything from it in this particular instance. And we're just going to do the reverse. If not s tmp i in a e i o and u then we're going to add the string to s temp that must be s surname because we're not working with s temp now we're working with s surname there we go STMP equals STMP plus S surname I. And of course, because I'm not deleting anything in this particular instance, I could actually use a for loop instead of a while loop. And then we finish by putting this into the label. Label, in this case, it is label display surname label display surname dot caption equals stmp okay so there are a number of different ways of doing these activities they all add up to more or less the same thing use whichever suits you save your work Right, question 
when the user clicks on button 5, we have to reformat a telephone number so that it is spaced out. Oh, we're going to be doing that here. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to give myself a little um, temporary string. And let's see, telephone numbers. The first section is going to be from S till no. S tell, sorry. So S tell. We're going to copy the first three digits, starting at the first digit and ending there. The second part, we're going to copy from STL the next three digits, so starting at digit number four, and we're also going to copy three digits, and then we're going to copy the last little bit, which will be starting at digit number seven, and we're going to be copying four digits. And we're going to add all of these together as appropriately. So STEMP, STMB, colon equals the leading bracket, plus this, plus the closing bracket and a space, plus our next line, plus a space, plus the remainder of the line. You could, if you prefer, work with several copies of stemp. stemp colon equals stemp plus the principle should be the same either way. And we can pla place this into the label. So that label's name, let's just check, that is this one, label display tell no. So code ELDL display tell no dot caption colon equals STMP. Again, this entire thing could have been written in one line. But I prefer to split it up just because it makes it easier to read and easier to see where you've made mistakes. Splitting it up into three little sections like this, if any one part of this is incorrect when I try and run the program, I can see very quickly just where the mistake is and I know where to correct. Scrolling down. So for 1.6, when the user clicks on button 6, a unique code must be created, and we start with the first letter of the client's name, second letter of the client's surname, the third number from the client's ID number, the fourth number from the client's telephone number, and then a random number between 1 and 10. This again is a pause, copy, delete exercise. So, question 1.6, we can create a temporary variable. Temporary variables are very useful things, and STMP is going to be the first letter of the client's name, so S name 1 would do it. I could also use copy, copy from S name, starting at the first character, and I'm only copying one character. I'm going to add to this the second digit of second letter rather of the surname copy from S surname so starting at the second letter copy one we're going to add to that the third letter of the ID number so copy SID 3 1 
and the fourth number of the telephone number. So, is tell. This is one reason, by the way, why it's a good idea to work with temporary values rather than the actual original data, because if I had changed the telephone number field that I've got in my class, the fourth digit would no longer be in the same place. We would have reformatted this and the fourth character would be different. So, copy from STL, comma, four, comma, one. And to that, we're going to have to add a random number between one and ten. Now, remember, if I say random ten, it's going to give me a random number starting at zero and ending at nine. Once again, I'm going to create a variable to hold my random number. I R N D equals random ten plus one. And now we add this together again. STMB equals STMB plus, remember the number is an integer. I need to convert it to a string. Int to STR and that's IRND. That gives me my code. We can put that into the label code component. LBL code dot caption colon equals STMP. And the name isn't rep recognized. Let's just check what it's called. Display code. Display code. There we go. Last question from question one. When the program starts, load the picture named nwfilms.jpg into the image title component. If we have a look at the data files, you'll see in this particular case we have FS videos. Like I say, this was a modified Northwest paper. So that is image title. I just want to check the name. Image title is this blank object right at the top. If you are unable to find it, you could also find it by choosing image title in the list of structures. So image title dot picture dot load from file. Just like a memo component or a list box where you have a load from file method, the picture property of an image type of a T image also has a load from file, which will handle most forms. This one is a JPEG, which means you do need to have JPEG in your users clock, users line. It is there, so we can say FS videos.jpg and don't forget the extension .jpg it might not show in your windows if you don't have file name extensions enabled so you have to make sure that you include the file name extension as part of the name there we are fsvideos.jpg and that will appear on form show so hopefully if I sort out the minor errors, okay, this is because I'm busy trying to apply this function lowercase returns a string and I'm busy testing individual characters. So what I could do is this lowercase a surname and then index it and you'll see the title appears. Okay, that's the end of the first question. We'll have a look at question two in the next video. See you again shortly.